I keep seeing over and over why Jesus made it clear. It's this narrow path that leads to life and few are going to find it. People like this guy got large followings. People is following them and they're preaching this type of nonsense. So this is letting me know that y'all have no idea what the Bible is actually saying. All right. Because you're saying the commandments are not the 603 laws of Moses. That's nonsense that you're saying right there. And then you go on to say. We are to keep the commandments and obey the Most High as the Messiah did until all is fulfilled. <sighs> Sometimes I really wonder, do you people use your brains that God gave you? It's absolutely clear in the Bible, no one can keep the law of God. None of us can do it. All right. That's why the book of James make it clear. If you try to do it and you stumble in any point, you're guilty of breaking it all. Right? It's literally tying into what God declared in Exodus 34, verse 6 and 7. Making it clear he is a God of forgiveness, but he will by no means clear the guilty. The book of Romans is making it clear about us. And it says what about us? We're all guilty. Romans chapter 3. Go read it yourself. Reading is fundamental. All have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. Right? So if James is saying if you try to keep the law and you stumble at any point, you're basically cooked. And then we got God himself making it clear in Exodus that the moment that you sin against him, he cannot just clear the guilty. I don't understand why y'all can't do the math. Simple math, man. But let's take a look at scripture because people keep doing this, right? Y'all want to make it seem like law and commands are not the same. When Jesus himself made it clear that it is. So let's take a look at what Jesus said. And if anyone have an issue with this, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Take it up with God. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. All right. So this is Matthew chapter 22. Right. We can start at verse 35. Right. It says, let me actually take it up a little bit. Right, we see what it says. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Right, I stress this over and over again. What Jesus is talking about here is the moral law. Right, he just summarized commandments one to four. Right, love um, loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he goes on in verse 38 and says, this is the first and great commandment. 39, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? So that's commandments 5 to 10 of the 10 commandments. The lawyer, a Pharisee, right, asked him a question, tempting him, which is the greatest commandment? Right? Jesus basically replies and says, all of it, all of it. Right. That's literally what he says. All ten are great. All ten are significant. And then listen to what he says in verse 40, because this is the problem that people like this guy absolutely just skip over or maybe are just blind. Right. He says on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. That's what he says. Right. You see it right there. Right. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. And once again, he's summarizing the moral law, the Ten Commandments. So, I don't understand how people like this can come in. They can say the commandments are not the 603. Yes, it is. It's all one and the same. Y'all need to stop trying to separate the law of Moses from any other part of itself. If Jesus come and he said the moral law is absolutely intertwined with all the law and the prophets... How can you guys think that you can come on the scene over 2,000 something years after the fact and separate it like you are God? You can't do that. It's all one and the same. And I'm going to end it right here. This is my second time today going back to the book of Acts. So we see this is Acts chapter 15, verse 10, right? It says, Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear, right? Verse um, 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So this is an apostle of God, right? Peter, 
that is making it clear none of them were able to keep the law why tempt ye god to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear it's absolutely talking about the law of moses all of it stop trying to separate the moral law from the rest of the law of moses it's all under one umbrella i just showed you the scripture matthew 22 verse 40 jesus made that very clear to all of us now once again if you're Jesus, or if you think that you have the power to keep the law, you're going against what scripture is saying, and you're going against what his own disciple, his apostle, has decreed and declared in his word. This is the word of the living God, and I'm going to go with what the Bible is saying. Y'all should try doing the same.